Um, I'm going to work our way through uh, module one, online module one, and we're talking about compression. That's what the reading is on, uh, and you're going to, that's sort of the final piece uh, for completing project two. Um, remember, when you're working on project two, uh, that document that says project two, how to do, um, follow through that document as you work through um, those audio files uh, and that assignment. Okay, great. Um, all right, so compression. Um, this is the reading. Uh, here's some notes for you. Uh, what we're doing when we compress a signal is, I think a lot of people think that compression makes a signal louder. That's not actually the case. Um, it ends up making it sound louder. Uh, but what we're doing is we're actually, we're compacting the dynamic range uh, of an audio signal. So when you run something through a compressor, when you run an audio signal through a compressor, you're having a check for the loudest signal um, and it's reducing the level of that. A compressor reduces the volume of an audio signal whenever it goes above a specified level. Uh, this level will henceforth be known as the threshold. Um, so actually what this does is it, it reduces the loudness of a, of a signal. Once the louder passages of performance, of a performance have been reduced, um, you've, you've basically made it so the quieter parts are still down here, but the louder parts have been brought down lower. So the, the, the dynamic range is less. What you do then is you take the entire signal and you make it all louder. So then there's less of a difference between your loud parts and your quiet parts, which means that you can hear the quieter parts better. The louder parts stand out less. Um, and what this does is it, it to us it sounds it sounds louder. Uh, it sounds kind of more more exciting or more more scrunched. Um, so it's a, it's a it's a more more compressed or a, a less dynamic sound, but it, it ends up sounding louder to us the way our ears perceive it. Um, Okay, uh, main parameters here, you guys are going to be working with this in Pro Tools. Um, we've got our input gain, this is how much signal gets sent to the compressor. Uh, the very important parameter of the threshold. So this is the, the loudness level, or the level in decibels, at which the compressor begins to squash. And yes, that is a term that is used quite often when talking about compression. Squash, uh, squash or reduce uh, the volume of a signal. Um, okay, another concept here that you'll see is this idea of a knee. Uh, generally, we're going to hear these these hard knees, but uh, uh, the the hard knee or the soft knee, those those two extremes, uh, that widens the threshold level, um, making it it sort of rounds off the point at which the uh, the compressor actually kicks in. It rounds off the the threshold point, and I'll show you an example of that. Um, so when you have a very hard knee, uh, it's a much more strict uh, and the compressor will activate more quickly. Okay, the output gain. If you're only going to remember two things about how compression works, I would say that would be the threshold and then the output gain. Okay, so the threshold is essentially how much you're going to turn down um, the louder signals. So that's how much you're pushing down the loudest that that signal can get. And once you've squashed that down, then to make it so it, it's louder, you turn up the output gain. So the quieter parts go up along with the reduced range of the louder parts. Um, so basic compression, if you're just going to sort of do a, a basic compression on something, would be to set the threshold so it turns those loud parts down, and then do the makeup gain or the output gain, turn the overall signal up. Okay. Um, other more detailed parts, um, and honestly with compression, um, it's all about the details. Uh, I think I, I talked about this a little bit in class, but our ears are incredibly sensitive to changes in dynamics um, at very, very small um, durations. So when dynamics change in very small amounts of time, we're actually very um, attuned to that. We're very aware of that, uh, almost subconsciously. Um, um, it's, it's pretty fascinating.
And these, these details here uh, make a big difference. So the ratio is how much input level is needed to, uh, to keep, keep the volume above the, uh, the threshold uh, going up. So when you have a very high ratio, you'll actually see this on the compressor, it ramps up to the threshold and then everything above the threshold just gets squashed down. Um, there's sort of a, uh, I guess, sort of a, a, a series of values above your threshold, uh, whereas that's how much the volume is getting crank, cranked down. So the higher your, your ratio um, of input to output, the, the more that above the threshold that volume is going to get totally smushed down. So you can get to a point where it's just a, literally just a straight line going from the threshold. Um, the attack, this is really important. Uh, this is how quickly in milliseconds the compressor turns a signal down that is above the threshold. So how quickly will it kick in? And literally we're talking differences of, of three milliseconds uh, will have an impact on how you perceive the sound. Um, and then the release, uh, this is how quickly the, the squashing stops when this, the compressor sort of lets up on the volume afterwards. Okay. Um, we're just talking about strict compression now. Um, so yeah, let's dig into this. Uh, as far as this note sheet, this will be something you'll be able to reference um, when you're taking the quiz. I don't think the quiz is going to be that challenging given all that. Uh, this is a huge topic and it, it really, it takes, honestly, it takes years to really feel comfortable with this. Um, basic competence can be achieved fairly quickly just based on what we're doing here. Uh, just so you know, there's there's a part two down here. Please go ahead and read this if you like, but that's you're not going to be responsible for that. It's really just this information here for the quiz. Okay, so uh, let's dive in and see if we can do some of this. Uh, hopefully, you guys have Pro Tools going on your machines. Um, yeah, so let's find some audio to work with, and what we're going to work with uh, is some audio in. Um, our course site. Let's publish, let's republish this. So this is going to be in week five and I've got some drum, some raw drum tracks here. Uh, I'm going to suggest you do what I do, which is you download the kick, um, the snare top and bottom. We talked about that. And then to make it uh, really informative, we're going to also download the, uh, the overhead left and the overhead right. So download those tracks. You can see I did that here. And uh, put them in a folder. Um, I put them in the session folder that I created for this Pro Tools demo. Um, yeah, put them in there. People have different ways of getting audio into Pro Tools, of course. We talked about that a little bit, but so yeah. Download those and then put them in that folder so you know where they are. And then what I do, my usual procedure for working with ye old Pro Tools, you guys don't really have to see me, do you? There you go, hi. Um, my usual way for working with Pro Tools is I just, I just take the, the audio files and I drag them in and just drop them. Uh, once again, there's you can do the import technique if you want. Um, but with that, it's, it's whatever works for you. Okay, now these uh, drum session files here, notice I got my kick on the top, my snare bottom and my snare top are here. I suppose I could flip those if I wanted to. And then I got my two overheads. Um, now for the time being, let me switch this back. Here's my mixer. So as you can see, I have a channel strip for each one of those tracks I dragged in. For the time being, whoa, I'm going to keep these overheads left and right. I'm going to keep those just pan to the middle so we can hear things a little bit better. But if you guys follow along with this, uh, I think this will be um, this will be useful for you. I'm getting a little worried. I'm frozen down there, but that's okay. Um, all right. So let's go back to there. Let's go here. Why are you frozen? Let's just close that. You don't need to see me anymore anyways. All right. Okay, so I've dragged these uh, audio files in there into my, my waveform window. 
and let's see what we're getting here. I already have it set so it loops. All right, so if we go through and solo all this, there's a kick drum track. Um, here's the two snare tracks. Top and bottom. Doesn't that sound great? All right, now these are my overheads. There you go. Uh, and you can hear, you'll hear a little bit of saxophone in the background there. That's some bleed um, from the uh, uh, saxophonist in the uh, ISO booth, who will remain nameless, um, is bleeding into those overheads. But in this song, once the rest of the tracks are added in, you don't hear that. Anyways, so what we're going to do for fun is we're going to, uh, let's just mute all these. We're going to compress these overheads and see what kind of sound we can get. All right, so let's stop that for a minute so you can hear me talking. Um, okay, there's different ways to add inserts. There's different ways to add effects or signal processing uh, in Pro Tools. Um, we're going to do the most basic way, which is just to have an inserts uh, tab or row here. Uh, if you don't have that, um, there's two ways you can use the inserts in this basic way, these plugins, is you can go to your mixer if you want, and the mixer is always going to have your, your inserts here. So you can go in and pick that. Um, I tend to not use the mixer window that much. For a lot of this stuff, I like to use this in my edit window. Now, if you don't have these here, here's a neat trick. See this white um, accordion file cabinet kind of looking thing, sideways files? I don't know. Um, you can go in there and you can check off what you want to show up in this side window. Uh, I tend to do my I.O. so I can route things out. We're not going to have to worry about that too much. My inserts and my sends, that's going to be the main stuff we're working with. Um, a lot of times it comes preset with uh, comments, um, but we don't, we're not going to make comments today. Why would we do that? All right, so um, let's apply a compressor to the overhead left, which is currently pan to mono. All right, so I'm going to do a plug-in, and then I like this. This sort of explains it all. All the compressors in Pro Tools are found in the Dynamics uh, plug-in uh, drop-down or side side over menu um, you guys probably you might have a lot more than me in fact I think I could have more than this if I went to the Avid site and uh, downloaded those anyways um, this basic one though this is a great compressor uh, as far as the visual um, visual input you get from seeing it so here we go I'm gonna select on the uh, Compressor slash limiter. We're doing mono. Remember, we're doing uh, not a multi channel plugin. Okay. Here, let me show you again. Boom. Yeah, it's a mono. It'll tell us. Okay. So, boom, boom, and compressor. All right. So, we've got this track. So, all the others are muted so we can hear it. All right. There's my overhead. And you can hear, if you listen to it, uh, how that snare drum hit is really popping out. Um, what we can do is we can compress that. So the way we do basic compression is that first uh, parameter I was talking about, which is threshold. So I'm going to make it so um, the compressor is going to kick in and make anything that gets above, right now, negative uh, 33 dB. Let's quiet that down. And I'm going to really compress the majumbos out of this. Let's go all the way down there. And look, I love this. You can see uh, this orange downward line there. It's, that's the compressor actually pushing down to squash uh, any volume once it gets above uh, 46. That's a lot. Let's go back to That's a little better. Okay. Now, you'll notice the signal has been made quieter. Hopefully, you guys can hear this. You'll be able to do this on your own. What I can do is I can bypass here, and, and you can listen to the difference. Let me go, and it sounds a little bit louder because I'm bypassing it. Listen to when it's on. 
Here it's been made quieter. Now here's where it gets interesting. The gain here, this is the output gain or the makeup gain. Watch what happens when I turn this up. I'm going to raise the whole level of, of the signal. I've sort of pushed down the volume of the snare. I'm kind of cranking that back up. And bizarrely enough, um, you'll notice you can you can hear that the saxophone bleed a lot better, and that's because I made the quieter parts louder. Uh, I brought the, the I, I squashed the dynamic range of that signal, and then I brought the whole thing up. So that saxophone was more audible. Uh, that's actually undesirable, but you can hear the other drum parts. You can hear those better too. Now let's compare the two. See, you can hear on the uncompressed version here, where I've got bypass on, you can hear that snare is popping out a lot more. And here, all right. Now we can play around with these other parameters too. Um, my attack is set to um, kick in. It takes it about 10 milliseconds for it to kick in. So that's a very small amount of a second. That is, what is that? It's not 10%. That's 1% of a second. So that's awfully quick, but we can go more than that. Here, listen what happens when I turn the attack so it's shorter. It's just really getting in there and, and cranking down on it. As opposed to... And, you know, it's really these subtle differences. Uh, we can turn the ratio up a little bit. And when we turn the ratio up, you're going to see this line is going to level out really flattening out this signal. And you can hear what it's doing to the sound. It's really making it sound really slammed out. Here, listen, this is without it. So it's very different. We're hearing a lot more of that sort of um, resonant, sort of boomy room sound there. We're hearing all that resonance more. Okay, so we've made a very rocked out uh, overhead. Um, now, here's the great thing. What we can do is uh, let's unmute this. Uh, this is our overhead right. We could take this same, all these compression settings, and by holding down Option and then clicking, now I have both of these are compressed. Let's turn them both on. That's pretty ridiculous, actually. I'm using a very extreme example. Um, now here's something that's fun too. You can copy an effect or a plugin over to a different track by holding down Option and clicking and dragging it. If you hold down Control and click on a track, uh, it actually will um, use the. It will bypass it for you. So here, watch this. Holding down Control, now it's gone. Let's turn it back on. Hold down Control. All right, pretty out of control. But what we can do now is we've got these really compressed overheads and I've kept them in mono so far. Let's go to our mixer uh, and let's just, okay, so we're done doing the compression stuff. We're, we're gonna leave those on for now. Uh, I'm gonna pan um, left and right with these overheads and if, if I press space or play, you'll hear a difference, obviously. You're gonna hear the, the stereo stereoscopic or stereophonic sound here. Kind of neat. Now I'm going to keep my kick and my two snare tracks, top and bottom, I'm going to keep those panned in the middle. Um, those are thus far uncompressed, but those are close mic'd. So there's a lot more detail in those. Let's add those in, all right? Let's get rid of this so we can see what we're doing here. So now I'm going to play, play this and uh, I'm going to add my bass drum, my kick. We can hear that detail and it's right in the middle there. And here's my snare.
Here's uh, here's without. Let's get rid of the overheads, and then I'll add those in. You can hear the isolation there on the, on the snare and the kick track. Let's add the overhead. There we go. And just for reference also, let's bypass, hold down control. It's a really different sound, isn't it? Uh, this super compressed, um, with the gain all the way up and the, the ratio cranked up the attack kicking down or squashing down really quickly, uh, which is this, hold down control. There you go. So um, you could see what a, what a difference this makes uh, to the sound. That's just compressing the overheads. Um, gives you a lot of flexibility uh, in how the, the ear perceives the sound. I haven't done anything to those overheads, but actually make the louder parts quieter uh, and then do some, some clever manipulation, um, uh, literally um, in gradations of you know 10 decibels and 3 milliseconds to how I'm uh, turning down uh, the, the louder parts. Okay, so that's, that's your basic compression. Uh, I hope you guys uh, were able to follow through on that, and I hope you're able to do that on your own. Uh, do go to the course site and grab these drum files, like I told you, and try and re replicate the same thing. Uh, I would highly recommend that you do that uh, if you want to get into some, uh, some compression stuff. I'm going to be asking you to do some compression on bass and drums, uh, for project two, but that's just a basic overall uh, picture of how you can you can play around and experiment with some some basic compression. Um, I'll be doing one more of these where we revisit uh, gating, um, but for now uh, let's just work with that. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, and hopefully these are working out for you guys, and we'll we'll do some more as the as our our online experiment uh, continues. Thanks. I gotta stop it. How do you stop it? Come on, baby. Let's see. How do you stop? This is gonna be embarrassing if I can't figure this out. Quick time player. I used to know how to do this. Once I knew how. Just to quit and see how far I lose that. There we go. Of course I do. Hopefully. Hmm. Huh.